All right, you guys, uh, today we are taking on a little mixed rigid transformation practice. So all of our rigid transformations, we know that they preserve uh, the size and shape, right? We're just altering the place and position. So the pre-image and the image always are perfectly congruent, right? They're just in a different location on the coordinate plane. All right, so first up, when I look at my rule right here, I see that X and Y have switched position and only one of them is going to the opposite sign. So I can identify this rule as a 90 degree rotation. And is it going with the clock or against it? So I can see that the negative right here, the opposite sign is going to the one on the right, which tells me it's gonna to veer to the right, which means it's a clockwise rotation. So I can do this by applying the rule to each point. So if you like that, that's fine. Or if you like to do that swinging arm that you've seen me model a couple of times, you can do that too. So let's say that I'm doing my, my swinging arm first. Let's say that I'm looking at point P. So here's point P right here. So I'm picturing my arm. Let me zoom in because I know that these grids can be <laughs> very small unless I'm zoomed in. Okay, so here we go. So picture this little arm right here. So I know that I'm going left seven down two. So if I'm swinging that to the right, and I'm following the clock like this, okay, then this left would go up seven. And this down part would go left two. And that would put me in my new spot for point P. I don't always have to draw that arm to know how it's cranking around the wheel, but sometimes it helps just to have that visualization. Okay, for I, let's say that I do it for I. So I am going right two and down four. So then I would go up two and left four. So right here would be my new I. I prime. Okay, G next. So G, we're going right, negative nine, and down, negative six. So I'm going to go up nine and left negative six. So left six. So right there will be my new G, G prime. So that's how I do it without following the rule, right? Just by recognizing that it's a 90 degree rotation clockwise. Okay, I wanna remind you how you could do it with the rule as well. I like that you have options. Okay, so if I was doing it with the rule, let's say that I looked at where point P is. P is at negative seven, negative two. So P prime, if I go to my rule, right, they're switching positions. So the negative two will go first. And then I see that the X is taking the opposite sign. So I'm taking that negative seven and writing it as positive seven right here. So if you'd like to follow the rule, that's just another way to get there. So here, negative two, positive seven, just confirms that I'm in the right spot. So I'm trying to give you guys two methods for how to get there. So picturing that swinging arm around the origin as the center of rotation or by applying the rule. All right, next one. So here I see that the Y's are switching to the opposite sign. So I recognize that this is a reflection Okay, and then it's a matter of across what line. So here, since the Y's are switching to the opposite sign, I'm gonna cover that up, and that reminds me that it's gonna reflect over the X axis. So it reflects a reflection over the X axis. Okay, our book would say that it's a reflection in the line of 
y equals zero. So it would it would phrase it a little bit differently, but I have no problem just saying it's a reflection over the x-axis. So where is my x-axis? Remember that this is x and this is y. So let me darken the x-axis. So we're saying that, that is our mirror right there, the x-axis. So if I reflect over it, here I'm one away from the line, so I have to go one over it. Here's my r prime. A is nine away, so it has to be nine away in the opposite direction. So here's my a prime. T is four away, so I have to go four away in the opposite direction. So here is my t prime. So then I connect the dots. And then here is my transformed figure. So all of my points have reflected across the y-axis. All right, next up. In example two, we're graphing a composition. So a composition just means that we're doing back-to-back -back transformations. So here first it's saying let's do a translation, four right, two up. So each point goes four right and two up. So one, two, three, four, and then one, two. Here would be point D prime. Okay, O, four right, one, two, three, four, two up, right here will be O prime. Okay, G, one, two, three, four, and then up two, here is G prime. Okay, and just a reminder that once you connect your dots, if your figures no longer look the same, right, they have to be congruent, just check to see if you plotted one point, maybe two, in the wrong location. All right, so right now we're looking pretty good. Right, my figures still look identical, so now I'm going to move on to the next step, a reflection in the line y equals negative x. Okay, so again, that's how her book phrases it. So uh, it's just saying it reflects over y equals negative x. So the slope is negative 1, the y-intercept is the origin, so here I'm at the origin, down 1, right 1, right, this is my slope, and then let me connect the dots, and here is my line. So y equals negative x. Right there. Okay, so if I want to reflect over it, I could apply the rule, that would be fine. So my rule here would be x, y, arrow to the right, negative y, negative x. So I could apply the rule, that's fine. Or remember that I can count the line horizontally or vertically and do the opposite when I'm going across the line. So for example, if I'm looking at d prime. Here if I go horizontally to the line, how far away am I? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven units, so horizontally seven. So I need to go vertically seven, so vertical, go up seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So here is my d double prime. Okay, for g prime, if I go over, okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, so I went over horizontally 8, so I'm going to go up 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, here's my g, double prime, okay, and then for o, Right? I could Again, I could go horizontal or vertical. Let's try vertical this time. So if I go vertical, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So now I'm going 12 to the right. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So here's my O double prime. 
connect your dots. Okay, so what I should see is a beautiful reflection across the line y equals negative x. And if I wanted to verify that, I can use my ruler. And if I hold it in here, right, I'm just confirming that here, that segment that connects the d's, so d prime to d double prime, right here, it's being bisected, right, by the line y equals negative x. So we know that the mirror line ends up being a perpendicular bisector of the segment that connects d prime to d double prime, same with the g's and same with the o's. All right, next one. All right, so for B, I'm saying a 180 degree uh, clockwise rotation about the origin. And the directionality of it doesn't matter because if I'm rotating 180, I could go clockwise, I could go counterclockwise, it's gonna end up in the same spot over here, right? We know that this is also the same thing as saying a reflection over both axes. So let me write it like that. So a reflection over both of the axes. And if I wrote that as a rule, just to remind you, here I have x, y, and it just switches to the opposite signs. Okay, so if I look at B first, so B as a point is at negative 6, 8. So I want to go positive 6, negative 8 puts me right here. So here's my B prime. A is at negative 6, positive 4. So I'm looking at positive 6, negative 4 right here. Here's my A prime. T is at negative 9, positive 4. So positive 9, negative 4, right here. Here's my T prime. So again, I could also have just reflected over the x-axis than the y-axis or vice versa. The order that I flip over the axes would not matter. I would still land in the same end position. Okay, remember that we're rotating around or about the origin. So if I connect the B's, for example, I should see a straight pathway that passes through the origin. And remember that a straight pathway is 180 degrees. All right, next stage of the composition, we want to reflect across the line x equals 3. So again, another way to phrase that is to say in the line x equals 3. So that's a vertical line. So right here is x equals 3. So then I'm just reflecting across it. So here I'm 3 away, and 3 away would put me right here. So here's my a double prime. Uh, t is, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 away. So if I go 6 away, that puts me right here. So here is my t double prime. B is 3 away, so 3 away puts me right here. Here's my B double prime. So when I connect my dots, here is my resulting figure. And remember that we, we use the single and double prime notation just to show the different stages of the transformation. So we're doing a composition, so we have back-to-back -back transformations. Here was the first one, so first stage, and then here's our second stage right here. So this is our final draft. This is our final end position. All right, next we're performing a glide reflection. So that is a type of composition, but it's a little bit more specific. So we know that it has to be a translation. 
and a reflection in either order. Okay, so it could be vice versa, that would be fine, but it has to be a translation and a reflection. Okay, we also have to know that the pathway of the translation, so where the vector is moving us, has to run parallel with our mirror line. So I usually write that as the translation pathway. Is parallel with the mirror line. Okay, so let's start off with the translation. So it's saying let's move five right and five up. So let's start with C. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Here's my C prime. For A, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. A prime. Okay, for T, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. T prime. All right, so here is the translation. I just want to draw in one of the vectors so you can see what that translation pathway looks like. So I'll do it with the t's, t to t prime. I could draw it in for all of the points, but I'm just going to draw in one just so we can keep an eye on what that translation pathway is, because remember, it has to run parallel with the mirror line. All right, so the reflection is across y equals x, or in the line y equals x. So I start at the origin, up one, right one. Okay, I'm giving myself a few points. And then I'm going to connect my dots. So y equals x. All right, so if I'm reflecting over it, I could apply my rule, that would be fine. So my rule, start with x, y, arrow to the right. We just switch the x and y positions, so that would be fine. Or you could do my workaround, which is counting to the line, horizontal and vertical, okay? And then just doing the opposite across it. So let's say that we do it as a combination of both. Let's start with the C prime. Let's say that I go up one, two, three, four, then I'm going to go left one, two, three, four. So here's my C prime. Okay, for A prime, let's practice just switching them. So here this is at seven, one. So I want to be at one, seven right here. So here would be my, my A prime. Oh, sorry, A double prime. I got to give double prime here. Okay. So in purple, I should have a C double prime and an A double prime. All right, for the T, let's say we apply the rule again. So here we're at 10, negative 1. So I have to be at negative 1, 10 right here. And there is my T double prime. Okay, connect your dots. and we should see our resulting figure. So remember what we can do to double check. If I connect the C's, right, I should see that my mirror line is a perpendicular bisector of that segment. Same with the T's and same with the A's. Okay, again, a glide reflection means that we have some combination of a translation and a reflection. So, uh, we also have to make sure that the translation pathway runs parallel with the mirror line. So we can see that all of that is all of that is happening here, right? So we are definitely a glide reflection. We can see that these pathways are running parallel. All right, last one. I love these problems, as I'm sure you know. Here we have a triangle fox. 
and here will be triangle uh, F double prime, O double prime, X double prime. So they're on the same coordinate plane, and we're trying to move this one to this one's position. And there's a reason that I did not put the O and the X, the O double prime and X double prime in those two slots, because it depends on what you choose to do, right? It really could be um, if you do a rotation uh, or if you do a reflection, right? It might put the O here, X here, or X here, O here. So I left it open because I'm looking for what you guys can come up with. All right, so let's come up with a couple of options. Uh, let's say that I start by reflecting over here the x-axis. So here's x, here's y. So here our answers can vary. Let me put that right here first. And I would say that there's probably, man, I'd probably say there's probably 10 things you could come up with <laughs> that would work in this situation. So I'm totally flexible. I want to see what you guys come up with. So I'm going to say, let's start by reflecting over the x-axis. Okay, so if I start there, here's my mirror line. That would put me right here, and then here, and here. I'm just going to do a little sketch of what it looks like right here. And then what would move me into this spot, I'm going to go right 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and then up 2. So I'd follow that with a translation. 10, 10 right, and 2 up. And then I usually do a little sketch over here to show what it would look like. So F double prime here. This would be O double prime and X double prime, just like that. Let's come up with one more option. But again, there are, there are many options that would work here. So let's just do one more. So let's do one where it's a um, rotation. So let's start with a 180 rotation. Okay, so let me use my blue here. So if I look at where F is, F is at negative 6, negative 2. So if I go positive 6, positive 2, that would put me right here. And then let me put in the other two points. I'd be here and here. So that's my 180 rotation, and then I have to translate it into its final spot. So I have to go left 2 and up 2. So a translation, a 2 left and 2 up. And then what would that look like? Well, here, if I rotate this 180, this is my O double prime right here. This would be the X double prime. So this would show you how the orientation could be different, right? Just depending on if you started with a reflection or a rotation instead. I'm sure there are other possibilities that you guys can come up with, but I'm just going to walk you through those two. Our answers can absolutely vary here. We're just trying to be creative and thinking about how we could use two transformations to get this figure into this figure's final spot. All right, that's all I have for today. Have a good rest of your day.